Say what, everybody? Today on Mikey Balls Fishing. First, actually, we got to release the new Bog shirt. Pretty cool, huh? What, what do you think? Does it look like him? Bog, does it look like you? Yeah, I think it looks like you. Yes. Got a new Bog shirt. I'll put a link to it down in the description box. You can go to um, Bass Attitude and get it. My buddy put it together. I think it's pretty bogish. You guys can be the judge. I like it. I like my dog. And I think you guys like my dog, too. But here's what we're going to do. We did all these Florida videos. I hope you guys are enjoying them. Dude, I love fishing in Florida. Miss Alabama, and I can't wait to get out on the water. But we're going to do something that pertains to Florida. We are going to do an unboxing slash review video. I got the new gear up. Um, it's tournament winning baits. All from past like FLW, bass tournaments, all kinds of tournaments. All stacked in this bag. A bunch of baits. We're going to go through them. I'm going to run through kind of how I rig them. What I use them for in particular. It might not be the same as what they used them or how they used them in the tournaments to win. But we're going to do an un... I guess it'd be like an unbagging video of the new Gambler gear up make sure to check out the new t-shirt say hi to bog you want to know what's in the box <laughs> so do i let's get to it guys so the best way to do this thing is to grab the bag and go like that so this is the gambler gear up i think it's number 12. basically the concept behind it is it is a bunch of tournament winning baits whether it's the old flw tournament tour whether it's bass opens whether it's um the i think the old uh, costa events uh bass master events we put together a bunch of baits that have won some major national tournaments and in a gambler sort of way so i'm going to run through all the plastics that are in here um there's one set of punch skirts it all comes with this um gear up tech dry bag basically it's a dry bag that folds over and then you go like this and close it up and you can put your cell phone in there you can put baits in there hooks anything you don't want to get wet in your boat i actually put rain gear in this joker so it's a good way to keep things dry but l let's get to the fun stuff and l let's talk baits so i like pretty much all of these and actually some fall into my sweet zone so we're going to start with some of my favorite stuff and you guys saw this in some of the early florida videos from i think earlier this month and two of my go-to punching baits it works in florida but it's actually been something that's been super successful up here on gunnersville uh pickwick the tva anywhere where you get any kind of like matted vegetation and grass in here you get let's see if there's any other ones i think that's pretty much it the baby cricket um these are in back at you and these are in friendly fire let me show you the colors real quick friendly fire i really like it's kind of like a, a june buggy red kind of deal it's a different kind of look it's somewhat transparent too which ironically um, when you're talking about like the tba in gunnersville the water's pretty clear it's like that green clear so i like something that has like a darker hue to it kind of looks like the brim but is somewhat transparent because the water is so clear but one of my go-to punching baits is the cricket and it comes with two different ones um, i'll put it on a one and a half and punch it through mats i'll even go down to like a one ounce depending on how thick stuff is this year one of my big goals is to try to do this on primrose um once the like kind of like spring deal starts up on gunnersville and put it on like maybe like a three quarter or a half ounce and pitch it to the edges of some of that deeper primrose that real viney stuff and then if i want to upgrade size i can't remember i think mike sermon won on this guy it's like the most classic old school gambler bait ever and shout out to my boy donnie bass it is the crawdaddy this is in silver shadow it is one of the most old school classic baits and it i'll be the first to say it doesn't look super cool but it catches bigs and i think the big reason for it is is because of the simplicity of the construction you know it's got super simple claws super simple appendages doesn't do a bunch of kicking it just kind of shakes as it falls and that's the same reason why i like that that bb cricket is because it is a simple presentation these lakes get so much pressure that's one thing that i'm learning and taking to heart big time is the amount of people which is awesome but a lot of people go fishing up on the tba and in florida there's been a lot more people fishing too so making presentations that are a little less I guess disruptive um especially when you're getting into heavy cover because oftentimes those fish are using heavy cover because the weather isn't right maybe a front went through or they're tucking up in it because of the pressure so i don't want a bait that moves a whole bunch of water i want something that's kind of subtle so basically my philosophy is is if it's super cold or if it's super clear and i want a super compact presentation i will go with a cricket if i want 
still a nuanced sort of subtle presentation, but I want a little bit bigger bait, I will go with the Crawdaddy. Don't sit on that BB Cricket. I think I've talked about it in older videos um, as a finesse jig trailer. Absolutely killer. It's something I'm going to do for smallmouth up in up like by Pickwick Dam and that. So as long as we're talking about punching, um, what's also included in here is a couple bags of the Stinger. The Stinger is basically kind of a, a ribbed um, creature style bait. You can see one right here, black and blue, you know, totally classic color. It's got these two kickers on it that are ridged just like that. And you pull that joker apart and then it's got those flappers. I will put this thing in mats. If I'm looking for a, a creature style or a beaver style bait for mat fishing, if I'm trying to mimic brim, you can see like the profile on that really does look like a brim. This bait is in here because Kyle Walters won I don't I think it was the Costa Series Championship it's called that or it was called on Lake Gunnersville punching mats with this guy. And let me tell you it works. I punched some mats on Gunnersville with it. It's absolutely killer. Um, one thing about this bait and I've mentioned it in other punching videos before is it is a slender as well as a super supple um, lure. You are going to burn through some, but frankly, I think you get better hookups because of it. Um, on that snell, it pops right through here, dude. When those fish lock onto it, even if it's one of those dead weight style bites, when you just pull back with the braid, that hook pops right out and it hooks them. It can lead to using more baits and it can lead to following the bait when you're actually punching on through, but I like it. And shout out to Kyle, man. He actually he like absolutely cleaned up on Gunnersville with this thing. He took him to town. I think his final day bag was like 25 pounds or something like that. But it comes with the black and blue. And then you can't go wrong. This is kind of a, a snazzy little Florida color. This is June bug with a blue tail. For some reason in Florida, especially like the Kissimmee chain and those central Florida lakes, they love that blue tail. Whether it's a creature bait like this or an ace, I don't know if it's because the brim are kind of like purple blue and they see that and that's what their tails look like or something. But dude, they love this color. The other thing that you can do with this, I don't do it enough because I use a Mega Daddy for it more, but you can actually cut it down right there and use it as a chunk on a jig. I'll just kind of, I, not even so much thread it on, but basically slide it over that hook so it's kind of free floating and dangling. And it's a, a good jig trailer, but one thing that I will note is because the body is so flat and the flappers are, are kind of flatter and kicking, um, it will slow your rate of fall of the jig. So if you're trying to fish the bottom, you might need to upgrade, save an eighth or a quarter of an ounce on your jig to keep it down on the bottom. But if you're actually looking to kind of slow down a jig fall, say you're skipping docks or something, it's a classic spring pattern. This is something to look at because it will slow that fall of say a half ounce or a three quarter ounce jig down quite a bit so you're getting sort of that undulating fall i love this guy and whether it's because of history this was really my first association with gambler uh way back in 1999 davy hype won the Bassmaster classic i believe it was down on like the red river it was down in louisiana and he did something that i still don't see enough guys doing with this this is the bacon rind um it's a creature style bait kind of I don't know, it reminds you kind of of like that, that brush hog, I guess, that, that Zoom makes. It's got big old flappers, but it only has one big curly tail, and then it has these paddles on the side. A lot of guys, and I've done it too, will pitch this thing and you know use it as kind of like a target-oriented pitch or flipping style bait. But the way I actually really like to throw it is I will cast this thing and fish it just like a burner worm or a swimming worm. And that big old tail right there, you can kind of slow roll it and it just swims through the water and sort of glides through the water. And if you get bites on swimming plastics, whether it's little craw baits or creature style baits or hog style baits, give this a try. Put like a little 3 sixteenths or an eighth, on, an eighth ounce on, depending on how deep you're trying to get it. Um, fluorocarbon or braid depending on the heaviness of the cover slang that thing out there and just slow roll it so it ticks the cover i think davy was actually skipping it under bushes and he had a super light weight on it and he would just slow reel it back and he was catching bigs dude a lot more bigs than everybody else on a, on a very tough place to fish but the bacon rind is in there this is back at you it's like a black blue swirl and then i don't care where you are in the country but green pumpkin that's the other color that's in there it catches fish anywhere. Green pumpkin's one of those colors you can throw in Wisconsin, you can throw in Florida, you can throw out west, and you are going to catch fish because bass like it. Another unsung hero, I think, or, or something that doesn't get enough credit, 
is the ugly otter. And one of the reasons I actually, I used to throw it a lot more and I need to throw it more because there's definitely some things up here like on Gunnersville and that, that I think I can do more of and, and it will work as a trailer especially, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, the, the ugly otter is, it's kind of a beaver, kind of a creature, but it's like, it has these tabs and paddles. So this is the full size ugly otter. Uh, this is green pumpkin, red flag, classic color. You can punch mats with this. The only thing that I don't like about punching mats with this guy is, if you do punch mats, rip these appendages on the sides off, they tend to cling up a little bit. Um, I'm all about having a streamlined presentation to get into the mats and having that, that quick fall through and being able to sort of be efficient and move through things is super important to me. And these guys will, they'll hold your bait up, dude. Like you might have to use a little extra weight to get through. So if you do use it, just rip it off and then you get kind of a, a paddle tail worm creature presentation. I think that's actually pretty cool just like that. But good pitching bait on the back of a jig though is what I wanted to tell you guys about. This guy, this is the regular size, but my favorite to do this presentation with is the little guy. Um, it comes in, let's see here, actually the regular size, regular size is a four inch ugly otter in shadow blue. So that's another one of the big ones, but this is the sneaky one. I think Chris Lane actually used this one. This is the little otter in winter craw. And I know any of you guys that fish for smallmouth are going, that is an awesome color because it's basically chartreuse and pumpkin, which is awesome because oftentimes you're going to take a pumpkin or a green pumpkin bait. You're going to dip the tail. This is a laminate of that, but it's a smaller presentation. And one of the differences with the little otter is you'll see the appendages instead of being flat, have sort of a kicking aspect to them. They're sort of rounded and then they're faced sort of against the water. So when this pulls through the water, water hits these guys and they, they kick or they shake. If you guys fish micro jigs or even like swim jigs for bass a lot, this thing is killer and there's two different little presentations you can do. Let me grab a scissors real quick. So one, you can put it on just like this, slide it on, thread it onto the, the barbell hook, get it up there on the jig and you can drag it. These little guys will kick and this bigger paddle tail will kind of, it'll sort of like wave or undulate. It doesn't like swim super hardcore, it just kind of, as it moves, it, it waves, dude. It's like it, like it's in a parade. But one little mod you can do, if you look really closely, that tail has a, a small line indentation on it right there. And if you're trying to get a little more action out of it, or if you're swimming the jig more, you can actually take your scissors, and it's a lot like what you do with a flap and shed, but you go and line it up. I don't wanna screw it up here. You line it up just like that, and you put a little cut on there just like that. And what you end up with is a small curly cue like that. So basically what's gonna happen is the water's gonna hit that and it's gonna create a swimming style tail on the back of a, on the back of your jig. Plus you're gonna get these little guys that kick. It's a killer deal if you got like shallow wood. There's a small lake I used to fish when I was in college. If you guys go back way, way back to old school videos, I'm talking like 09, back like OG style videos, uh, there's one where I, I don't even know if I put up all the fish, but I had a day, dude, where I took a small, I think it was like an all-terrain jig. I don't even know if they make those anymore, but I took a small sort of a bullet head style jig and there was some scat like scattered grass as well as some small short stumps in probably one to two feet of water. I would cast this bait up to basically the bank, like six inches of water. And it'd be a, it's a smaller, more compact jig. I'd have one of these little otters on it. And all I'd do is sort of just pop it back over the stumps. Probably something you could do at stick marsh too. And dude, they would annihilate this thing. I don't know what it was, but it was the perfect blend of a little bit of water displacement because the water was kind of uh, like that green gooey colored, you know, you see it on like Harris chain sometimes, but it's sort of like that green, not clear, sort of like a milky color. But I would throw that jig up there and pop it through that wood and they would absolutely annihilate it. I assume they were spawning or staging fish, but don't sit on the, the little otter for a, a jig trailer. You can also punch, I actually punched this guy more on the mats because it is a little more compact presentation. I like small stuff when I'm punching mats, but as a jig trailer, definitely something that you wanna check out, especially if you're doing micro jigs. This thing is bad to the bone in this. Not so much in Florida, to be perfectly honest, uh, the winter crawl, but anywhere outside of Florida or even like North Florida, this pumpkin with chartreuse like that is a killer color.
but Ot Ugly Otter and Little Otter, kind of unsung heroes. So let's get back to something that's a little more classic. And there's three bags of these jokers in there. So we got six inch fat ace, six inch fat ace, six inch fat ace. The stick bait has been one of the most dominant lures anywhere across the country for probably the past two years. And I think it speaks to my personal kind of outlook and philosophy that a lot of these fish are getting more nuanced to catch. They're, they're not as easy to catch as they used to be. So you have to use baits that, I don't know, they don't have to be natural colors because obviously, you know, black with a giant blue tail like that is not a natural color. Actually, this is JB blue. So this is a sort of plum June bug with a blue tail. It's one of the new colors actually. So the color isn't like super natural, but the action is natural. It's a straight pointed tail. You can see how it quivers too in my hand. Putting this on a Texas rig, like a quarter ounce, an eighth ounce, even a sixteenth ounce, or even weightless, literally will catch fish anywhere in the country. I don't care where you are. Like if you're a bank fisherman and you want to buy one bag of soft plastics, buy stick baits, like an ace or a fat ace. You will catch fish, I promise. And if you don't, you can literally troll my videos until the end of time, until I stop posting them. But you can do a lot of different things with this guy. So you can throw it weightless. You can throw it Texas rig. If you guys look back at some of the videos, I've also used this thing on my, my power nets quite a bit. When I do that, I actually cut it down right above the worm sack, right either above the worm sack or right below right there, depending on whether I want a really compact presentation or something a little longer. For staging, spawning, spring fish, this is an absolutely killer presentation. I don't know why. I'll be 100% honest with you. The Ned works because it's, you know, it's smaller, it's compact, it's a straight style bait, but I don't know why that jig head gets so many more bites than a Texas rig because it doesn't make total sense. You think it like stands up a little bit more, but sometimes in all honesty, it doesn't. Sometimes it lays on the ground or lays on the bottom sort of flat, but there is something to that, that jig headed presentation that, that gets a lot of bites. So you can throw this thing on a Ned, the other thing too, and you'll probably see me doing it when I go up to Gunnersville and um, pick with in that, is taking one of these jokers, especially, where is that color? This, this is actually probably the color that I'll use too, because the water's gonna be slightly dirty, but not super like dirty. There'll be a slight clarity to it. Black, blue, green pumpkin on a wacky rig, once again cannot go wrong dude it's one of those presentations that you can skip under a dock you can throw around grass or over grass and you put it on lighter line eight to ten pound test do it on a spinning rod it gets a ton of bites it's one of those things that like i said i don't understand it i just know it works and if i'm not getting bit any other way i can pick up a wacky rig it takes a lot longer to fish it's a slow process and it's not like you can slang it a million miles but wacky rigging a stick bait like this absolutely killer but like i said if you got one presentation to make grab one of these jokers throw it on a texas rig you know whatever kind of weight you need to get down to the bottom in a in a gradual sort of way and um just drag it around throw it around any kind of cover or in any hole that you see and i guarantee you you will get bit and you will probably catch some big ones too but there's three bags of those jokers in there uh for you guys on Kissimmee. just a little note Kissimmee and harris this color this jb blue is as good if not better than black blue tip just an fyi so give it a try what else we got in here all right we'll do another kind of unsung hero and this is a shout out to my good buddy rest in peace dude glenn brown Glenn Brown is probably one of the greatest flipping and punching anglers and one of the nicest guys ever to come out of the Gainesville, Central, North Central Florida area that tournament fish. Um, he passed away a couple years ago um, due to cancer, but I had the opportunity, if you guys go back and fish, uh, go back to the videos, I had the opportunity to fish with him and my buddy Chris King Kringry from 44 Tackle. We did a YouTube versus pro thing. Dude, it was so much fun. Of course, Glenn and his buddy totally whooped our behinds, but Glenn is one of those guys where after he whooped us, because he's got to whoop us, he's competitive, you know, he literally told us exactly how to catch him and went back out and caught a bunch of fish and had a good time and learned something and took something away from the day. And that, to me, just shows class. And I don't know, he's, he's good people, and, he, and he's very well missed. But Glenn won a tournament, and it was kind of a cool deal because nobody was doing it on Fort Loudon Telco Lakes uh, back 
had to be like five, six years ago, um, one of the FLW events, and he took, this is the Gambler flipping tube. This is the four inch, I believe. Yeah, the four inch. This is black blue shark, or black with a chartreuse dip. So basically the inside tentacles have that chartreuse look to them. He's fishing fairly dirty water, um, early spring. There were a bunch of fish in super skinny water, and he would take like a 3 16 or a quarter ounce weight. I think he went a little heavier in some situations, but he's fishing pretty shallow. And it is fun to do this. You can do it on braid, you can do it on fluorocarbon, but you literally pitch this tube to every single tree fall that you find. Couple keys. One, you're gonna fish really shallow. Two, you need to deliver the bait very quietly. But that's where a tube is kinda nice because it is a streamlined deal and there's also air in it. It doesn't sploosh that loud. So even if you're fishing like a foot, foot and a half of water, you can pitch that thing in and feather it down so you're not making a big splash. And that is one of the keys when you're flipping that shallow of cover. But don't sit on a tube. A tube is not a northern thing. I'll also tell you this, I have caught a lot of big bass out on Lake Okeechobee pitching this joker to reeds. And it's something that I think a lot of guys, or more guys did maybe four or five years ago, but it's kind of a lost art on some of our, our Florida lakes with emergent cover, round reeds, cane, and pads. Flipping a tube to pads is one of the most under the radar techniques ever, like for big bass in the south, dude. So definitely give that a try. Use as light a weight as possible, but a tube fish is super clean in those kinds of situations, almost as clean as a stick bait, if not maybe even a little bit cleaner, and it mimics those brim that are swimming around and bedding around those types of areas. But a very cool presentation, and I guarantee you, not a lot of people doing it. So we will throw in, we got two more items. Um, this guy's classic, burner crawl. I've been using this a lot more in the weirdest way than compared to what you actually expect. I've been putting this joker, this is a black, blue, green pumpkin, two of the best colors in bass fishing. I actually put this on a Ned rig. Um, I use it when the water's either a little colored, a little stained, or there's a lot of wind breaking up the surface of that water, and I don't want such a clear streamlined presentation, like a stick bait, something that finesse. I want it to move a little water and draw the fish in. So those burner craw the claws actually, you know, they're slight kind of subtle kicking. They have a slight subtle kicking action. And that on a Ned rig has been absolutely killer. I'm not doing much with it. I'm either letting the current move it or I'm slow dragging it. But if you have a little stain in the water, a little wind, and you're looking to make your Ned stand out a little bit more, burner crawl, perfect. You can also punch mats with this. If you have fish that are a little higher activity level, um, those kickers will draw some more bites than the streamlined presentations I was talking about. What's also nice with the burner crawl is you can see it has that full body the hook pops out a lot less. So we're talking about the stinger or the, the BB cricket. The hook does pop out a lot on those because they're, they're thinner, softer, more streamlined presentations. This body on this bait is fairly meaty. You can stick a four odd or a five odd straight shank flipping hook in here and it's gonna hold and you can pitch it into the nastiest garbage and it's gonna stay embedded. You gotta hit them pretty good when you set the hook in that, but you still got your snell on there, you're using braid, ain't much to worry about. One of the other things that you can do with a burner trough, the other color in here, this is a river bug. One of the other things is something my buddy, uh, my buddy Walt taught me, and it was in one of the videos I did like I think a week or two ago. Um, you can take this and put it either on your swim jig or on a wobble head um, and basically swim it over or like tick the grass with it. Uh, kind of a cool presentation, especially with that wobble head. I don't think a lot of guys are doing that. I love doing that because basically I can throw out that wobble head and I can either reel it and tick the grass, you know, let those kickers kind of and tick the grass with the head of that, that wobble head, or I can let it and just let it sink to the bottom. So I hit like maybe a rocky bank or like a clay bank or something. I can drag it just like I would a Texas rig, but because it's on that wobble head, it gets a lot more fluid motion, has a little different action to it. I, I like that presentation. It's one of those cool ways where you can fish it fast or fish it power fishing, cover water style, or you can drag it. But there's two burner crawls in there, one in river bug and the other in black, blue, green pumpkin. Black, blue, green pumpkin, black, blue, green, I can talk, I swear. Black, blue, green pumpkin is probably, in my opinion, one of the best colors in bass fishing. If you're on super clear lakes, it doesn't cover you, but on a majority of lakes anywhere in the country that have a little bit of stain to the water, a little bit of color to the water, it's perfect. It's the best of both worlds. The last thing you'll find in there is this guy right here. This is a quick change punch skirt. Quick change punch skirt is, actually let me get it out for you because I'm actually going to use it when I pitch some docks. 
What sets this guy apart is that grommet right there. If you guys see, that's a wider grommet than you'll find on most punch skirts. The, the reason behind that is the quick to change punch skirt is meant to slide up over your hook so that you don't need to retie every time you want to put it on. One of the biggest faults with punch skirts, it's not even a fault, I guess it's like any lure, sometimes they bite them, sometimes they want nothing to do with them, and I will be the first to admit. So being able to just slide it over the hook, you know, maybe pitch a 50, 60 yard stretch and try it out, take it off if it doesn't work, leave it on if you're getting bit. Like, it's that simple. It's in that back at you color, so I think it's back at you, or silver shadow. It, to be honest, they look kind of a lot alike. You get that black and blue mix. The other two things that you can do with this guy, and I think I've talked about it before. We talked about pitching reeds. Actually, shout out, let me show you this real quick. I got a buddy on Kissimmee that showed me this presentation. Take a stick bait and take your weight and take a little punch skirt and you can pitch reeds. And basically you have like a skirted stick bait. It, it's actually super cool and it glides down if you watch it go underwater. Super cool sort of finesse, like we were talking about, a little more nuanced finesse sort of flipping presentation that they don't always see. That, I really enjoy doing that. But the other thing that you can do is when you have situations where you're pitching a jig, whether it's to docks, whether it's to heavy grass or wood, sometimes that jig is just not snagless or weedless enough for the, the heavy cover that you're trying to get it into. One way you can still get a somewhat jig fall, it's not exactly the same, I'll be the first to admit, is using a punch skirt and a Texas rig um, in those more open or emergent cover situations. You can pitch this, we used to do it up on Observation Shoal on the Shoal, we call it on Okeechobee, where we have places where we'd want to pitch like a double weed guard jig or something along those lines, and it was just too thick. You'd hang like every two pitches, and it was annoying. So basically, we'd set up a punch rig with a one ounce, anywhere from a half to a one ounce weight, use the punch skirt, and then say like a big mega daddy, or a why not, or a mega uh, set of mega daddy, a stick bait, just some big honky kind of plastic to mimic brim. And dude, we'd pitch it like 25 feet back, like into no man's land, dude. And since it was Texas rig, instead of having those double brush guards or that single brush guard like a jig does, uh, we were able to fish it pretty cleanly and actually sometimes get fish out. It's always hard to get them out that deep, but that's a cool way you can do it. The other thing too is to go back to some of the old school OG videos. I think Val actually won them um, and ever start doing this, is you can make the most weedless, snagless swing jig you have ever experienced. So basically you take the Texas rig, um, you can do it with a, a, what do you call it, a twist lock hook, or you can do it with a Texas rig offset shank hook. Put that weight on there, add a punch skirt, and add your soft plastic. And basically you get something like that swim jig presentation, but it's far more weedless, far more snagless. It comes through just about anything, but you're still getting the bulk of the skirt, and then you're getting a, a less weedless sort of trailer. You can put a lot of different trailers on it too, from a swim bay to a, a paddle tail worm. To, you can do just about anything you want. But if you're looking for something, especially in grass that's a little more clingy, um, that seems to be a good presentation because that swim jig will, like softer grasses like milfoil or pepper grass, it'll, it'll kind of grab some of that stuff. Um, with a presentation where you do that modified swim jig with the punch skirt, it rides a little bit cleaner through there. But that's what's in the bag. I'll put a link to it down in the description box if you guys want to check it out on www.gambler-lures.com. It's a solid bag. They're tournament winning baits. I, feel, I kind of felt like it would fit in with all the Florida stuff that we're doing. But I like them. I throw them all. You know, I have a bias towards Gambler. You guys all know that. But try them out. If you guys got any questions or any techniques to add to what I mentioned in the, in the unboxing, definitely drop them below. This is a, a conversation. This isn't just me talking at you because I hate that kind of stuff. So drop them down in the comments. But thank you guys for supporting the video. Let's go say bye to Bog. So Bog, honest question. What do you think about the new Bog t-shirts? I think they're pretty cool. Is it, is it high five material? High five for Bog t-shirt? All right. That's a good way to end the video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys. We will check back in with you later.